It's really good to see all of you today, especially this morning. You know, it's a time of the day which, uh, with which many of you are not often acquainted. <laughs> we know that the night is a much better friend. You know, and I know this because I often see you then at uh, Rock Bottom, of course, at uh, NYP uh, for late night pizza runs or at Sweetwater where Where some of you volunteer, volunteer to embarrass yourselves by singing karaoke, on karaoke night in front of a bunch of people you don't even know really well. Uh, Bova's Bakery is for those of you who live in the North End. And Middle East and Central Square is for hipsters. I used to eat there a thousand years ago. You know, I am a hipster, and uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a lot of swag, so. <laughs> uh, the Game of Thrones, uh, Pitch Perfect, One Direction, and Lana Del Rey, these are things to be played, watched, and listened to, and they're completely unknown by your parents. You live in a time in history in which the pace of change is remarkable and unrelenting. Let's consider that Twitter, which among many virtues has empowered communities to unite and topple oppressive governments, was created just seven years ago when you were entering high school. Tumblr was launched in 2007. Prezi during your first year at Emerson, Instagram the following year, and Videogram when you were juniors. And if you're really, really cool, you've, be, you, you've moved beyond the old school stuff to Foursquare, Riddit, Pinterest, Stumble Upon, Get Glue, and Path. So you can explain or in, rather interpret what I just said to your parents after commencement is over. Before we begin, I just want to show you something. Because this is us. Four thousand sold, eight hundred thousand dollars raised on behalf of Boston One. This is Emerson. You know, we've had quite a year, you and I. It began with the hurricane named Sandy and ended with the Boylston Street bombings that tested our resolve in the face of evil. And in between was a nor'easter that dumped almost two feet of snow on the city, a foot shy of history. We survived a chickenpox epidemic and endured, sadly, at least for those of us with really good taste, a wretched Red Sox meltdown <laughs> worthy of a Sophoclean tragedy. <laughs> and most sad, of course, a beloved member of our senior class, a young man who was chock full of life and brimming over with humor and quick wit, left us standing on these shores with heavy eyes and, and, a, glist, and a heavy heart. Yesterday was his birthday. Now it is time for you to take your leave. It really is. These events remind us that our college is neither a walled garden nor a refuge from life, but rather is life itself, life piled upon life. You are part of all that you have met here. And you know, lately I've been thinking about a resplendent hero who several continents away from here lies frail as his last years or even his last months or days draw nigh. I've been thinking of Nelson Mandela, a man who at the age of 44 was imprisoned on a lonely island off the tip of South Africa. He was imprisoned not because of he had committed a crime, but because of his unwavering faith and belief in the sanctity of the human heart 
and the power of a single individual to make a real and lasting difference in the world. He was imprisoned for 28 years, first in Robben Island, and then two other prisons, 10,000 lonely days, more than a lifetime for most of you. At Robben Island, he lived in a damp concrete prison cell, four feet by six feet, where he could see nothing of the world beyond except a small patch of blue sky above his head that met the tall gray walls that defined the prison yard. He could walk the length of his cell in three paces, and when he lay down on the floor at night covered only with a thin blanket, his feet touched one wall of his cell and his head grazed the other. You know, he wrote after his release from Robben Island that he said in those long and lonely years, my hunger for the freedom of my own people became a hunger for the freedom of all people, white and black. I knew as well as I knew anything that the oppressor must be liberated just as surely as the oppressed. Man who takes away another man's freedom is a prisoner of hatred. He is locked behind the doors of prejudice and narrow-mindedness. The oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity. Four years after almost three decades of imprisonment, he became, at the age of 76, the president of the same country that had imprisoned him for more than half of his adult life. I've been thinking about the heroic temper that permitted him to re-enter the world upon his release without the soul-debasing remnants of bitterness or defeat. But mostly I've been thinking about the idealism, the resiliency, and the hope that shaped his life, a fierce idealism of faith and equality and human dignity, the unimaginable resiliency to survive against all odds three decades of isolation, cut off from family and friends, and a hope that the country he loved, despite its cruelty to him and others like him, would one day rise again, united as brothers and sisters with the warm embrace of liberty and, yes, forgiveness. Idealism, resiliency, and hope are these not the qualities of the created, creative spirit that so animates our commonwealth of learning? Are these not the qualities of the storytellers who show the way forward for human aspirations? As I said to you a few weeks ago, we are the magic makers. We are the myth makers, the truth tellers. We create and affirm beauty and goodness, and there is pride in that. If Mandela lived in a heroic age, then so do you. Believe in your power to make of this old world a new world. Believe in your own thoughts. The highest merit we ascribe to Moses, Plato, and Milton, said Ralph Waldo Emerson, is that they sat at not books and traditions and spoke not what other people, but what they thought. Whether you are in front of a camera or behind it, whether you are a director or an actor, whether you teach the speechless to speak or you speak to others, whether you are a poet or a preacher, whether you organize communication or communicate to organizers, whether you create markets or market creators, Speak with conviction, but avoid arrogance. Be critical of the world around you, but without diffidence or indifference. Be discerning without being cynical, brilliant without being boastful. Show deference to history without being imprisoned by it. And know deep down inside that moral courage is, a, is greater than fame or fortune, and that it will outlast both.
and make no small plans. Because as a smart person once said, small plans don't create the magic that stir the souls of women and men. All of us assembled here today wish you happiness, but we wish you much more than that. And while we wish you the prospect of making a living and a prosperous life, we wish you even more the prospect of living a good life. For while the first may bring you pleasure, the second will bring you happiness that endures and that lasts even when pleasure is absent. And as we depart today, let us, you and I, come to know that when we stumble or fall, for we surely will, that there are those who love us, who will pick us up, dust us off, and point us in the right direction. And we are so grateful for their love. Let us, you and I, beware of holding back when those who love us want us to be that wonderful and splendid thing we have never been. Let us, you and I, cherish and tend with care the friends we have made here. Let idealism and resiliency and hope guide your life. Put your trust in these, and I guarantee you, everything else will take care of itself, whatever your profession or your path in life. And one last thing, stay calm. <laughs> so when you depart from these halls of learning, <laughs> may you find life work of noble note. May you find meaning in your commitment to others. And may your memories of Emerson be undying always. Good luck and good cheer. <laughs>